Yo, guys, what about this house? Oh, I don't know. The beagle is kind of scary. It's got a battle axe. The hole looks like it has some bones in it. I'm not sure if we should trick or treat now. Oh, come on, guys. If I don't get a treat, I'm going to pull off a trick. TP? TP. 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 Ah, it again. Children, you want to play a game? <laughs> well, that was fun. It was a good time. We got free TP and candy. Hello, YouTubers. I'm John Can. For today's project, we are going to build an air cannon that shoots candy. We're going to be using this old five gallon propane tank as our air reservoir. The first thing we need to do with this project is remove the bleeder valve from the propane tank's main valve body. This way we can make sure that there isn't any propane left in the tank under pressure. Once you have the bleeder valve out and have established that the propane tank is in fact empty, you want to just take the handle off of the main valve. This will give you access to the nut that holds the valve uh, internals in place. You want to just break that guy loose and unscrew it from the valve body, then remove all of the internal valve components. The reason we want to take the components out of the valve is that way we can fill this tank full of water. What we're looking to do is displace any propane that might be left in there uh, with the water. That way we don't have an explosion or a fire hazard when we go to start welding and drilling on this thing. Once you've filled the tank full of water, go ahead and drill a hole in the top of the tank about three or four inches down from the valve. This is going to be helpful in getting the water out of the tank. It's also going to be important later on in the process. Once you've got a small hole drilled in the top of the tank, you can take the tank and flip it over on its top and just let it sit there and drain. It'll take a little while for all the water to get out of there, but it's definitely worth it for the safety factor. Okay, we've made sure that the tank doesn't have any propane left in it. Now we can break out the plasma cutter and cut off the guard from around the valve assembly. This thing would just be in the way of the rest of the project. We just want to get it out of there. Great, now that that's out of the way, we're ready to cut a hole in the top of the propane tank. We need a hole that's about two and a quarter inches in diameter. I was able to just cut around the weld in the top of the tank where the threads for the valve were welded in. And this worked out pretty well. Now that you've got a hole cut in the top of this propane tank, it's a good idea to just take a flashlight and kind of inspect the inside of it. Just want to make sure there isn't a huge amount of rust or any other noticeable issues with this tank before you uh, wind up using it for this project. This tank didn't have any noticeable problems, so it was time to get out the grinder uh, and use the grinder to take off the leftover material from where I took the valve guard off and to clean up around where I cut the hole uh, in the top of the tank. I wanted to get all the paint off of there so that it would be good for welding. The tank's pretty well cleaned up. Now it's time to clean up the pipe nipple that we're going to weld into the top of the tank. Just like the tank, we want this thing to be pretty clean uh, so we get a good weld on it. I went with 2-inch pipe on this project because I wanted to make sure that we had a big enough pipe to get the air out of the tank quickly. Excellent, now that we've got that all clean, we're ready to just set that into the top of the tank so we can weld it in place. It should look about like this. Alright, we're ready to weld this all together. Uh, it's important that you take your time and make sure you get good welds on this. I went ahead and doubled up on the welds. You want this to be stout. We're going to put a lot of pressure in this tank, and this is a crucial part in this process. We do not want this to fail. Okay, where well we drilled the little hole in the top of the tank earlier to let the water out, we want to go ahead and drill that hole out big enough that we can put a heavy-duty valve stem in the top of the tank. This is where we're going to put the air in to charge the tank so we can shoot it. At this point, we're done with the metal working portion of the project. I went ahead and sandblasted my tank. I wanted to be able to paint it and make it look pretty. Of course, you don't have to paint your tank if you don't want to. Uh, if you want it to look rusty and nasty, that is completely up to you. Do whatever makes you happy. I feel like this is a good time to point out that this thing is not a toy. Uh, it is pretty serious. Make sure that you're very cautious when you're shooting it and that there is nobody downrange from you. Uh, it will do significant damage when we've got it all put together. Please be careful. Ta-da! It looks like a pumpkin! Yay! Now we're ready to install the valve stem. This valve stem is designed to be used um, in very heavy-duty applications. Uh, it would be used for semi-truck tires and whatnot. Definitely want something that's rated for very high pressure. What you want to do is take the core out of the valve stem uh, and then run a piece of string or a wire up through it. And we're going to use this wire to pull this valve stem up through the inside of the tank 
and into the hole that we drilled earlier. Once your valve stem is in place, you can put the washer and the nut back on, remove the string or the wire, and then tighten that thing down pretty good. You don't want it leaking around the seal. Now we're ready to install the ball valve that we're going to use to actuate this thing. Uh, you want to put some Teflon tape on the threads of the pipe nipple to make sure that when you screw the valve on there that it seals well. Just like with the valve stem, you want to make sure this thing is on there pretty tight so it doesn't leak. You also want to make sure that it is set up in a fashion to where when you go to actuate the valve, the valve stem that you've put in is not in the way of opening and closing the ball valve. Alright, we've got this thing mostly put together. And at this point, it's a good idea to do a little bit of safety testing. I've got an air chuck that I can lock onto the valve stem of our tank, and I've reeled out as much hose as I can to get this thing out of my shop. What I'm going to wind up doing is pressurizing this thing to 140 PSI. That's double the amount of pressure that we're going to use to shoot it. Everything passed the pressure test, and all we really have left at this point is to install the barrel. I've got a male thread by female slip adapter that I'm going to screw into the ball valve. And then we're just going to take a piece of 2 inch PVC and install it into that and that's going to actually act as the barrel for our candy cannon. It's important to note that I did not glue the barrel into the adapter. Uh, I wanted the barrel to be able to blow off of there in the event that one of our projectiles got lodged in the barrel. It's all put together, it's time to try it out. Our first shot, we're going to use these little, little tiny jawbreakers. They're little bitty things. It should be like a little shotgun shell shot. I'm dropping them. Not very tasty. You know, safety and stuff. <laughs> Took the paint off right there. Put dents in all the rest of it. The pumpkin is bleeding! Oh, the poor pumpkin! We got red hot things, cinnamon. Balls. Yep, I still don't like cinnamon. Look at the window right there. Look at them all, all over the place. Powdery. Mmm. And right there, look at that dent. I truly don't care about this car. Thanks, Orion, for letting us blow up your car some more. Yellow. I got the pumpkin that time. Barely. Right there. We've got dents from the lemon drops and all the little ones from the little gob stoppers. You can see where it's been hitting the windows. I haven't broke the window out yet though. And there's pieces of candy everywhere. You can hear the beagle over there. She's sad that she doesn't get any candy. Okay, found these two and a quarter inch straw breakers. My barrel diameter is two inches, so I had to trim them down a little bit, make them fit. I missed. Big old dent. Jawbreaker part two. I missed. And there is rainbow jawbreaker everywhere, but it dented the frame of the car. So it hit it so hard. Here we go. Oh. That was a good hit. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. This project was a blast to build. If you did enjoy this video, please take a second to subscribe. Or even better yet, take a second to share this with one of your friends. The more views that we get, the more cool stuff I can build. Also, if you're so inclined, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll put information for that in the video description. Thanks again for watching. I'm John Can, and remember, if I can build it, so can you.